there! This lesson is all about area. Area fills in space. So whether you're talking about a dance floor or an area rug, any sort of two-dimensional space is going to give you area. The definition of area is the measure of the amount of surface enclosed. So it's not the edge, but it's what's enclosed. And that can be measured with um, any sort of box. I could measure the area of this page by measuring the amount of squares I could fill in, and uh, that's how space is filled in. So let's take a look at creating some formulas um, for finding the area of some very common polygons. First off, we've got the rectangle, and a rectangle can easily be filled up with boxes. So say you had a 5 by 3 rectangle. So what you have here is 5 squares and 3 squares. So you've got 3 rows of 5 squares each. So you could view that as 3 groups of 5 or 5 groups of 3. Either way, you have 3 times 5 or 5 times 3, 15 squares filling in the area. Therefore, in general, the area of rectangle with le length and width is the length times the width. A square is exactly the same, except the length and width are the same. So if the side is S and the other side is S, it's exactly the same as a rectangle, except it's S times S, which gives us S squared. Now a parallelogram is based it basically a pushed over rectangle. So if you took a rectangle, knocked it over, and took that part and put it over here, the new shape, the one that I'm drawing a bit thicker here, is called a parallelogram. So you can see that it comes from the area of a rectangle. It's got a base and it's got a height, which was the original height of the rectangle. So just as a rectangle, we take the base and the height or the length and the width and multiply them because that gives us the number of rows of the number of uh, columns that we have. So similarly, the area of the parallelogram is also found by taking the base times the height. Now a triangle, a triangle can be created from a rectangle or from a parallelogram at any time. All you have to do, let's do this in a different color, is say you had the parallelogram, slice it in half, you got a triangle. That's it. You have a rectangle here, slice it in half, you have a triangle. So really, all you need to do to find the area of a triangle is to take half of your base times height formula. So when you have a triangle, you have the height and the base, just as in the parallelogram, and you basically just take half of that. Let's continue. Another uh, common polygon to find the area of is called a trapezoid. Now a trapezoid is a little bit different. It'll have a base, it'll have two bases, one longer and one shorter. Um, it will still have a height. Height is the same as in the previous shapes. But the difference here is that you've got two bases and they're not always centered very well or anything. So we need to find a way to find a base so that it will be the average of the two bases so that you can combine it back into a rectangle formula. Rectangle formula is in general base times height. But in our case, the, the trapezoid has two different bases. So what we have to do is find the average base. 
So if the bottom base is base 1 and the top base is base 2, finding the average is basically adding them up and dividing them by 2. Thus giving us the formula for area of a trapezoid. It's basically the average of the bases times the height. Next up, we've got the circle. Check this out. Pi r squared gives you the area of a circle. But where does pi r squared come from? First, we'll draw a circle and fill in its area. Next, we will divide it into large equal parts and arrange them in a rectangular formation. As you can see, it barely resembles a rectangle. So next, we will divide the circle into small equal pieces and we will arrange them in the same manner. You can see that it appears more like a rectangle. So, if we divide the circle into even more smaller pieces, you can see that every time the shape becomes more like a rectangle. So, how small must we divide a circle before we can get a perfect rectangle? Therefore, the area of any circle is pi r squared. Let's consider some area examples. The first one is basically an ice cream cone shape. It has a half circle and a triangle. And we're going to add the areas to compose the total shape. The diameter of the, the half circle is 3. But remember, our formula for area of a circle is pi r squared. Therefore, we need the radius, not the diameter. So if the diameter is 3, the radius will be 1.5. So let's use that. The area then would be pi times 1.5 squared. But we have half the circle, so we need to multiply by a half or divide by 2. Next up, we've got the triangle with base 3, height 10. And remember, the area of the triangle is given by half base times height, which gives half th times 3 times 10. Once those are complete, we will add them. So let's try this calculation out. If you have a calculator, the way you would do this is you would take you could take 3.14 times 1.5 or times 1.5 or times 1.5 squared and then divided by 2 or multiplied by a half. That gives you 3.5325 
The other component here gives us half of 3 times 10. So you could go 3 times 10 divided by 2, giving you 15. Or you could see that half of 10 is 5. 5 times 3 is 15. Either way, you get 15. Add those areas up, and we get 18.53. And let's just keep it there. It's rounded. The 2 does not bump the 3 up. And it's in inches squared. Why is it in inches squared instead of inches? Well, we're measuring area, which means we're filling up the space with little squares. Next example. If you'd like, you can pause the video and try it on your own, and then come back and see if you've done it right. Let's try it. We've got the shaded area here, which can be created by taking the total rectangle and then taking away the small parallelogram inside, giving us the rest of the area around it. It's like building a house. And we're measuring the area of the grass around the house. So the total total uh, rectangle here is uh, 12 by 8. And that is found by going 12 times 8. And the parallelogram is very similar to the rectangle formula. It's just base times height, 6 times 4. So that's 24. So we've got 96 square feet minus 24 square feet, giving us 72 square feet. Another type of example would be one where they don't show you the picture, they just tell you the shape. So you've got a rectangle a 20 by 28 yard rectangle. Um, the difference with this question is is if you do yard times yard you get square yard but they want it in square feet. So we have two options. One option would be to first convert so let's take 20 yards and 28 yards and convert to just feet. We know that one yard is equal to three feet. So each of these yards has three feet each. Therefore, we'd multiply by three. 20 times three gives us 60 feet. And 28 times three gives us 84 feet. Now, when we multiply those, because the area of a rectangle is length times width, Length times width gives us 60 times 84, giving us 5,040 square feet. We were able to use the regular conversion formula there. However, if you did not convert right away, you'd have a little bit um, of a hiccup because, let's check it out, 20 yards times 28 yards would give us 560 square yards. Now, one yard, pretend that's a yard, is three feet. But one square yard, so that's a one yard by one yard square, physically an actual square. How many square feet? This was one foot by one foot here. So that's one square foot. How many square feet are in a square yard? So basically, what I'm trying to point out here is that when you have square conversions, you actually have to square the units and not just um, keep it as it is. So there are actually nine square feet in one square yard. So every one of these square yards has nine square feet. Multiply 560 by nine and you get 5,040 square feet. However, if you used 3, it would be incorrect. So please be careful about your units. Another one of these for you to try, you can pause, you can try it, and then come back and check it out. The question is, how many square centimeters are in one square meter? So it's exactly the same idea. We know that one meter is 100 centimeters. However, if you make a square out of meter sticks, one meter by one meter, 
you'd have 100 by 100. So you'd have not 100 of those little squares, but you'd have 100 times 100 of those little squares, giving us 10,000 square centimeters in one square meter.